How are you? How many, uh, how many films have you done since you've been acting professionally? Um, I think about nine. Yeah. Started early as a kid. Really? Uh -huh. how, yeah. how old was your first film appearance? Were you? Um, my first film was Bad Boys with Sean Penn, and mm -hmm. I was, I think it was 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. Kind of a prophetic film for Mr. Penn, wasn't it? No, no. <laughs> um, but I mean, he's, he's, he's doing time, or he will be soon, don't you think? Do you, do you know I him very know. well? Um, sort of. I, I, I think he's great, and so I, I always send him letters, but yeah. I usually don't hear much back yeah. from him. He'll be reading them to his cellmates from now no, on. No, don't say that! <laughs> 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 uh, I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's sad. It's sad, but he, um, well, anyway, would, would, is he a nice man to work with? Yeah, he was great. He was, was really nice. Was he intimidating or scary? No, he was very sweet, and he... He worked hard, and I watched him, and uh -huh. he just, he was very, you know, concentrated. I got a lot yeah. from being around him. I didn't feel intimidated by him, yeah. but... Well, no, I always, yeah. I always enjoyed what he was able to do in films. I just think it's a shame that this other problem had to rear its ugly head, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, well, no, no, what do you mean you don't know? I, I don't mean to be making fun of him. I'm I just sort of commenting on the circumstances. I know, but I mean, this last thing, I mean, all right, you know that he gets upset if his picture gets taken. Right, it's sort of known that that bothers him. So this guy on his movie set takes his picture. Right. And then he said, this is what I heard, he said to the guy, don't do it, mm -hmm. right? This is Sean talking now Yeah, yeah, he said to the other guy, don't take my picture. Right. You know, he was getting upset. And so what did the guy do? Took his picture. Right, so what happened? Sean punched him. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now, that, now that you've explained it, I understand perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I think the problem here is uh, we have to encourage people to mollify their behavior regardless as to what extreme it may reach. Don't you think? That's true. I mean, I okay, so, so uh, but I think he had a history of punching people before he punched he this did. guy. He yeah. did! So he should think to himself, hmm, if I punch one more guy, maybe no, I'll that go little, to jail. No, that guy should have thought to himself, he punches people out, I better not take But other people him. shouldn't have to be responsible for the actions of Sean Penn. I guess that's true. <laughs> because I think he's great, you know? See, well, see, I, I don't have any complaints with his acting ability. I, I've seen several films in which, including Bad Boys, which I thought was a very powerful, gripping yeah. performance, uh, and, and others that I've enjoyed as well. I just think that it's a shame that if he understands that he has this problem, that he doesn't uh, take care of it. Okay, I understand your point. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh... Ali Sheedy... Ellie Sheedy. She had a point about, about Sean Penn. She the, said the point that, was... That if you were a photographer... Right. You know that if you were to take a picture of Sean Penn, he's probably going to punch you. You know that in the past, anybody who takes a picture of him, he punches you. So if, right. you, if you take a picture of him, it's really your fault. That's right. That he punches you. <laughs> That's right. You're running the risk, then. If you go ahead and you violate that little personal coda... That's right. You might get your lights turned out. That's right. So it's really the, the fault of the photographer. And, exactly. Uh, you know. Exactly, Paul. You have, I... Once again, you have put it so beautifully. Well, thank you. I think Ali put it, uh, put it for all of us. By the way, Paul, Paul, I, I didn't know you played tambourine. I play a little yeah, tambourine. Yeah. And, and castanets. And castanets as well. It's a stretch, but you know. Very nicely done. Thank you very much. Uh, now, let, let's just talk a little bit about your family. You want to, I guess people know the family you're from, or the, about you and your brothers and so forth, a bit? Some do, yeah. yeah. All right, well, tell those you who don't. You apparently do. Yeah, I know a little bit about it, yeah. Uh, your brother is, uh, one of your brothers, Sean. Yeah. And the, the other brother is? Christopher. Christopher. Yeah. Both actors. Any, anybody else in the family? Any other brothers or sisters? No, that's it. Just, Just three. So now this is an amazing thing, isn't it, that out of this one family, you get three very, very talented people. Um... Uh, I don't know. Is it? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Did you get along well with these guys? Uh, yeah, we were, we're still a very close family. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how old were you the first time Sean punched somebody? <laughs> no, that's a, I'm sorry. That's a it's a right. Go ahead, punch me. If no, you feel better. <laughs>
Would you like a soda? Uh, I'd like to see him run again. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, wasn't it? Well, right by the dressing room. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember a long time ago, you and I lived in the same neighborhood. Yeah, I saw you in the bank once. Yeah. You know, I used to go to the market, and uh, <laughs> I was living with a girl in a house out there and a couple of dogs at the time. And, and it would always be an exciting day or week for us when we would see you pull up at the market in your pickup truck. Uh, well, I can match that, because I, I, I still use your house as a tour stop when I bring people around my old neighborhood. <laughs> Dave used to live there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, let's see. Uh, not too long ago, your girlfriend, the mother of your son, was here? Child, uh, daughter. Daughter. Yeah. And your brother has been here a couple of times? Yes. Right. That's right. Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, your ex-wife has been here a couple of times? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, is, is, what, there was a time when, when I would occasionally make jokes about the difficulties you were having on the show. And I was wondering if the reason... <laughs> if the reason you hadn't been on the show before now was because you were, you were mad at me. No, no, no. The reason I hadn't been on the show just because I think that, the, that the, to talk about the business of acting is something difficult to articulate, whereas uh, it's much more tangible with directing. But in terms of that, I felt vindicated when I saw the Marlon Brando interview and he did an imitation of you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, but did you? What was that all about? Martin Brand, or Marlon Brando was making fun of me. Was that what that was? Well, it's you know, still part of the highest form of flattery now that he did you. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. If you have to laugh, if you cry, I can't stand it anymore today. I have to, I have to get a laugh. Right. Who would, what video do you buy? Um, well, you know what? I, uh, I like David Letterman. Do you ever watch David Letterman? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Hi, Dave. I've uh, been an admirer of his for some time. Dave doesn't do that. No, but I do it at the mention of his name. Now, I want to talk about the directing and stuff in a second, but let's, let's go back to that period of your life, if you don't mind. <laughs> you were having a lot of trouble. I mean, a lot of trouble, and in fact, some of the trouble took you away for about a month. Was that right? You were actually, you, you were in the, the L.A. County lockup for 30 days or so, right? Yeah. yeah. Now... When you look back on that time of your life, how do you regard that? What does that seem like to you now? Do you think, I made some mistakes and I can learn from those, or it was just bad luck, or what was I thinking? I mean, what does it seem to you now that that was? Well, no, I, I can't say that I have any particular regrets about any of, any of that time period. And, and in retrospect, it was a fairly short time period when it was so uh, 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 viewed by the press and yeah. so on. And yeah. they, they came down on it. But... Um, uh, just, just one more transition in life, I suppose. Now, do you, do you ever see yourself going through that kind of trouble again? <laughs> oh, God, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is the kind of thing where, where you get into a fight with one person, and then all of a sudden, situations are presented that would not have been there had the first one not occurred. Yeah, there's a snowball effect to any of that stuff, and particularly when you get caught up in, in, on any level in the uh, legal system, as it were, then uh, w once you've got some... Uh, uh, a tail on you, then yeah. tend to get in trouble. Yeah. Have you yourself ever been beaten up? Yeah. <laughs> really? You have been beaten up? Oh, yeah, yeah. How many fights do you think you've been in? in, in... <laughs> as, as an adult. Now, I'm not talking about high school stuff, but as an adult. <laughs> not counting the one here tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm asking. I was in two fights, yeah. and I lost both of them, and they both, they just scared me silly, and I said to myself, well, that's it for fighting. Well, I think uh, if fighting's an upsetting experience. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you feel badly after you've had, or after you would have one of those? Even if it's justified, you feel nauseous yeah. afterward, yeah. even if you win. Yeah. But um, if you have any sense of... Uh, caring about people at all you do yeah um but uh, but a lot of all, a lot of that stuff was fairly I, I mean i'm not gonna tell you i'm going to heaven but i would say that a lot of that stuff was pretty well blown out of proportion yeah i can imagine what what little i know of life in the public eye i can imagine that it was blown out of proportion um 
And, and when you, it looks like you have gotten the better of a person, then everybody, there are going to be lawsuits and it's going to be in the newspapers. But if you're ever in an encounter where you're on the short end of things, you never hear about it, right? Yeah, I don't tend to be one to get into lawsuits that I instigate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Waste of time. All right. Well, anyway, I, I appreciate your indulgence on this topic, but I think it, people are, you know, curious about that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and as far as uh, Madonna goes, do you, do you, have you seen her lately? Do you have a, a friendly relationship with her now? Or, uh... Well, I'll, t I'll tell you a secret. The fact of the matter is, as I was talking about before, uh, uh, things being blown out of proportion. That was on a rumor. She and I had never met. <laughs> <laughs> See? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it had to be something like that. Uh, we'll do a commercial and then we'll be back here with the strong band. We have a man tonight who claims to be the world's uh, most versatile man, James E. Macy, Massey uh, Sr. Uh, now, when did you, uh, what was the, behind the decision to stop acting? Have you stopped acting altogether or just stopped acting temporarily? <clears throat> I'd say, uh, you know, never say never, but uh, I, I just got to a point where I realized I wasn't enjoying it mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, having directed a movie, I had such a good time doing that that I, I think I'll try and stick with it. Yeah. What, what about acting do you think you began not to enjoy so well? I just found it uh, sort of uh, emotionally torturous. I think all actors have a different way of working depending upon who the, who, who the actor is. And there are some wonderful actors for whom uh, it's a very accessible process. And for me, it, uh, it was uh, like t tearing oneself apart. And, mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you think that there would have been an easier way for you to accomplish the same quality of work? I don't think so. I think what you latch on to and the thing that you, that you go after, and, and for me it was acting with the, uh, the, uh, are, uh, the, the challenges that are most fascinating to you. And, the, and, it was, and, and then making the choices that you make as an actor is then a, a, the way to achieve those choices uh, was very difficult for me, and you don't want to change, change them because it's difficult. Mm -hmm. so. Now, when you're directing this movie, uh, Indian Runner, and, and you see a scene transpiring and you think to yourself, well, that's good, but if it were me, I, I would have I behaved a different way in front of the camera. And then do you think, oh, damn, I'm sorry I made this choice? No. Well, I, I have a, a hell of a cast in the movie, and they uh, were much more suited for the parts they were playing than I would have been. Um, so, no, I think that uh, I responded less as an actor and more as a writer most of the time, watching this stuff and being uh, excited and surprised by what I was seeing. I, gen I generally have a, I mean, when I went into it, I went into it with a bottom line in terms of the storytelling uh, of the movie and, uh, and then tried to let the, uh, the other people, be it crew or cast, and make the embellishments for me. Yeah. But isn't there uh, some part of it, like if it were me, if I was an actor or something, maybe once a week or once a month, I'd race home and I'd close the doors and I'd just scream as loud as I could, I'm in a movie! You know, it would, it would be exciting to know <laughs> that people are paying money and sitting there eating stale popcorn, looking at my goofy face on the big screen. That would be, now, now, now granted, that's not all there is to it, but that would be a thrill. Now, it, was there a certain part of you that, uh, you're, are you going to miss that? Well, you, I guess you could always go back to it, can't you? Well, I think for me it was a little bit different. It was, it was uh, going home once a week and saying, oh, I'm in a movie. <laughs> I see, so it's just kind of the other side of that. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about the, uh, the movie that you have uh, directed here. What, what should we know? I guess we're going to look at a, a clip of it here. Uh, well, first of all, let's talk about how you got to be from an actor to writing your own script to getting to uh, direct your movie. Uh, I mean, people know you're a great actor, but that doesn't necessarily follow that, oh, great, we can trust him with a 10, 12, uh, 15 million dollar budget. So how does that happen that you get to be the director here? <clears throat> Well, I had been writing for a long time, and then when I decided I wanted to direct something, I wrote this particular one specifically to direct it. And, uh, um, it, it happened in a, much easier than it, than, 
than it might again or, or might have been any other time. And it had really to do with a producer named Tom Mount and uh, Don Phillips, who uh, Don initially read the screenplay and, and, and wanted to do it and brought it to Tom. And he was in a position to finance it, and it just went. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's unusual. Mm -hmm. and I think it just went to the right people at the right time. Yeah, and, and and because it's unusual, because it's the first time, was there added pressure for you? Did you did you ever really really get concerned about? Oh man, what have I done here? I stepped off a curb. No, I I was confident that in, in terms of the story that I wanted to tell, I had the images in my head, and I knew how to to, to achieve them. Whether or not that translates to another story, but uh, and, and that was really the only. Uh, Prerogative in a sense, and and this is based on the uh, the Bruce Springsteen song, um, Highway Patrolman. Highway Patrolman. And you heard the song once, and and all of a sudden you think to yourself, Th this works out to be a pretty good film. Is that how, uh, essentially how it goes? Well, the song hit me on a very strong visceral level, and I thought that uh, that that it was cinematic in a in a way. And then over the years, the the picture just coming kept coming into the head, and eventually it added up to what. I would have considered a long form, and so I banged it on a typewriter and went and shot it. Okay, okay. And, and you had no trouble getting the rights from Bruce to do this? Well, I, had, I wrote the script on spec without asking ahead of time because I, I know that he had been approached many times yeah. for, for the ideas of things, and I thought it would be a better situation to just go ahead and take the chance. I wanted to write it whether I got it done or not. And so, I went ahead, and so when he was in a position to approve or disapprove of it being done, uh, I, I was able to give him a script that mm -hmm. he could... He could make a decision and, and he thought okay yeah yeah i'd like to be in a film with him he and me me and bruce maybe a buddy picture <laughs> me and bruce join the army something like that um so sean now we're gonna see uh we gonna look at it now okay do you know what we're gonna take a look at here from the film yeah it's a it's a scene uh, t towards the towards the end of the story where the uh, older brother is uh, confronted his younger brother on uh, some some uh, issues of weakness in him that he thinks that he recognizes. This is the essential conflict, a good brother and a bad brother, right? In a black and white sense, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, here we go, a Indian Runner, uh, directed by Sean Penn. Well, there you go. Let's see here. September 20th. The, the film opens all across the country, New York, L.A., how does it work? No, it's a, pl uh, they call it platform release, where it's two theaters in Los Angeles, two in New York, mm -hmm. one in Toronto, and then two weeks later, 12 more cities, and then it's up to the movie. Uh, how it does that. Are you nervous now about this? No, well, I've taken it to a couple of festivals at this point, so uh, the, the big s sitting in a theater and, and watching it with a group for the first time has already happened, and I you know, certainly hope the best for it, yeah. but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit on with it. Well, good luck, and congratulations, and uh, again, thank you very much for being here tonight. Sure. I really, really appreciate it. It's, uh, we look forward to it for a long time. John Penn, kids. We'll be right back.